The verdant landscape and picturesque communities of Pennsylvania have looked like this for generations. But in recent years, the region has fallen into hard times. Factories have closed that are not coming back. They've lost population. This area has been pretty stagnant for a long time. A lot of jobs have been lost in this area. But that may change very soon. For communities that lie atop the Marcellus Shale, a rich deposit of natural gas that could help reshape Pennsylvania's economic future and perhaps America's energy future as well. We need to get off of foreign oil. The amount of gas available can supply America's needs for the better part of a half a century. It will help us uh, reduce the soot in the air and the water, help us reduce smog, and it's also much less carbon intensive. Despite these potential benefits, some residents in Pennsylvania and in other shale gas regions worry that drilling for gas will degrade and damage the environment. Little by little, it'll ruin things whether you notice it or not. So, as the nation struggles to chart its energy future in the face of a tough economy and the specter of global warming, the debate over shale gas, to drill or not to drill, grows increasingly important. And how this debate is finally resolved will have impacts far beyond the communities of shale country. To me, this is fundamentally a story about change and how people are gonna be responding to a change that is really fundamental and really big. The enormous Marcellus Shale deposit lies beneath the states of New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, and Maryland. And with several other large shale gas reservoirs, the United States is suddenly well supplied with this important resource. We went from a perception of energy poor to energy rich uh, almost overnight. Access to more natural gas means the country can reduce its burning of high carbon fossil fuels like coal and oil that are major contributors to global warming. Although the ultimate effect of this warming is yet to be determined, increasing CO2 has been linked to melting ice sheets and rising sea levels, more frequent severe storms, and regions parched by drought. We've got a climate crisis, and we need all available technologies and fuels that can help reduce those impacts. Using more renewable energy like wind and solar power to produce electricity would reduce America's carbon footprint. But these sources provide less than 4% of the nation's power and will take years to scale up. Using more natural gas instead of coal or oil would quickly reduce carbon emissions by more than half and would create valuable financial opportunities for the states with shale gas. There'll be more people coming in. There'll be more jobs. It will generate revenue in taxes. It's gonna be one of the economic powerhouses in Pennsylvania's entire economy. Today, scores of drilling rigs and hundreds of new workers are the most visible sign that things are already changing here. Where are you from, Pennsylvania? Yep. How long you been working for? Uh, this is a week today. A week? <laughs> Oh, you're an old hand, huh? How long have you been working for? It's created a tremendous amount of jobs. It's having just a tremendously positive effect on the Pennsylvania economy. The people of Pennsylvania have heard similar encouraging words from other big industries. Oil, coal, and timber interests also promoted the riches to be had by allowing them to exploit the state's natural resources. But they never mentioned the costs especially to the environment. Well, you've got 4,000 miles of streams in Pennsylvania where discharges from abandoned mine land are very acidic and they completely destroy the aquatic life. And nothing lives in it and you don't even want to go in it. 
just because of the acid mine drainage. My grandfather was a coal miner, and he died of black lung. But it never was quite real to me because I never saw coal mining. I only saw what it left behind. Like giant slag heaps of coal tailings that dot the Pennsylvania landscape, seeping bad things into the ground. A legacy some people fear will repeat itself with the gas industry. I hope that, that we haven't signed a contract with the devil. I think in the end, it's just, there's no really way of protecting everything. They're still a gas company and they're still out for profit. I think a lot of folks around here have that knee-jerk reaction that their energy, they're like coal, they're gonna leave the same legacy as coal, and that's just not true. That's Brian Grove. Yeah, nice to see you again. Uh, Brian Grove is the director of corporate development for Chesapeake Energy. What time did you guys leave? One of the many gas companies now drilling in Pennsylvania. What's your name? He I'm takes Martin. local residents and environmental groups on site tours with the goal of convincing them as well as the rest of the state. Is the Marcellus isn't flat. Uh, that the natural gas industry is trying to do things right. You gotta keep in mind what they're turning is 7,000 feet down and then over a half a mile in that direction away, right? Drilling for gas is a tough, complex, and technically dazzling process. Now, we're 9,731 feet deep. Here, the target for the drill bit lies more than a mile below the surface. It's a very thin region of shale, the remains of an ancient seabed that once contained plants and other organic material, now turned into gas. Believe it or not, there's gas in this. Uh, this is a core from one of our Marcellus wells here in, in Bradford County. Geologists have known there was gas in the Marcellus shale for many years and that it resided in thin natural fissures in the rock. Natural fracturing in rock shale would appear as a narrow slit. If we peel the crack back and open it up like this, we look at the surface of the slit and see these little lines right here in the rock that give an indication that this crack was driven by natural gas under pressure. But shale beds run horizontally, while normal well drilling is vertical. So to capture enough gas to make the process cost-effective, engineers devised a system to drill horizontally. The Marcellus being 100 foot thick, then if you drill through it, you get 100 foot of pay zone. But with the horizontal wells, we're actually drilling into the Marcellus and drilling out uh, close to a mile or sometimes more. By drilling out, we turned a 100 foot pay zone into a 5,000 foot pay zone. Drilling a well requires several rings of pipe and cement to prevent cave-ins and, more importantly, to protect groundwater sources from contamination. The largest pipe is the outer circumference of the well and the first ring of protection. This just kind of maintains the integrity of the hole. Subsequent rings help control gas pressure and keep drilling fluids from leaking out. The innermost tube will conduct the gas to the surface. Because the gas will pass through the water table, isolating the well is critical to prevent gas from leaking out. So the spaces between all the rings of steel pipe are filled with cement to create additional layers of protection. If we can't protect fresh water, we can't drill for natural gas. Once the well is drilled and the casing cemented, it's time to release the trapped shale gas with a process called hydraulic fracturing, or fracking. First, explosive charges are placed in the horizontal sections of the pipe that blow neat holes in the pipe and create vertical fissures through the shale. Then water, under enormous pressure, is pumped down the pipe and into the fractured shale. The water contains sand, which helps prop open the fissures, and this allows the released gas to travel to the surface. Activity at a drill site is intense but temporary. For three to four weeks, skilled personnel work around the clock, 
to ensure the well is on target and encases properly. Any mistake can cost time and money or compromise worker and community safety. So the drilling supervisor becomes a very critical player. Hey, Aver. Hey, have you got top drive down? Yeah. What's the problem with it? Haver White has uh, been a drilling supervisor for down. many years. They got a couple mechanics and the third one just pulled up. You've been down since 1030? Any ATA on when it's going to be fixed? The native Oklahoman no. has worked from They're Africa to Saudi Arabia, down. helping to solve just yeah, about any problem that could emerge on a right, drill site. Tomorrow, after I get through with the meetings again. My job is actually just to keep the team together, keep them working as a team. Let's go check with uh, Wilfredo on the directional tools. Here, the on-site drilling supervisor has run into a problem. They were drilling horizontally when they lost contact with a gas seam, which happens periodically because shale seams aren't always straight and true. Now, Fredo, is the slider working now with a turn of yeah. Looks like we've got it going, still going uphill. The men knew they yeah, lost the seam because gamma ray sensors secured to the end of the drilling bit stopped reading gas deposits. Signals from these sensors are simultaneously transmitted, read, and interpreted by experts armed with precise geologic data that can help the drill men plot a course to get back on track. From this point when you're coming over, from there to there needs to be four or 500 feet. As per the plan, we should start to drop somewhere around here. It depends on where everybody's at, but if everybody's It's a long day for the man from Oklahoma, but his work is complete only when the well is secure enough to begin the fracking process itself, the largest single operation on a gas site. When all the drilling and pipe setting is complete, lines of tanker trucks filled with water pull onto the pad. Compressor trucks to pressurize the water are moved into position. Stores of sand are ready. Pressure gauges are checked, and the connections to the high-pressure frack lines are fixed and double-checked. The entire crew is gathered for a safety briefing, and final instructions are given out. Stay in your assigned work areas. Do not meander around location. Make sure nothing moves around here without a ground guide. We're going to do a good job today, guys, not because it's required, but because we can. All the weeks of round-the-clock activity lead to this moment. On the surface, the frack is anticlimactic. The heavy action is happening a mile and a half below ground as gas, freed from its rocky domain, begins its long trek to the surface. In a few days, the rig and men, the equipment and noise will be gone leaving a well pad quietly sending natural gas along pipelines to the homes, businesses, and power plants of America. But for the residents here, the critical question is, what are the gas men leaving behind? There's not gonna be any mountaintop that you're gonna be able to stand on in a couple of years, years from now without seeing a gas pad. And I've read where there's gas in the water, where this lady had, you know, like I said, the gas in the water, fire, you know. Um, it's just, I don't, you know, it's just bad stuff. Concerns center on the effects of drilling on the environment, and for good reason. Fracturing requires millions of gallons of water for every well that's drilled. How will this massive drawdown affect the region's water supply? The process also requires adding chemicals to the fracking water to lubricate and protect the pipe and to aid in the propping of fissures. Some companies have refused to disclose what chemicals they use, which has fueled public fears that these are dangerous and could end up polluting rivers and streams. And with so many wells about to be drilled, Aren't some gas leaks 